these are all the lingonberries that you get with your IKEA meatballs. <laughs> but she is after the blueberries. She wants to make a cake. God, look at the size of it. Get them in the bag. Mm -hmm. well, that was a really good one. God, look at this side. It is mad that soon, only a couple of months, we'll be coming up here on a snowmobile instead. But there won't be any of these bastards. <laughs> Looking forward to the end of them. Hello everyone, welcome back to life in direct sunlight, apparently. <laughs> but we're up front here because this is where I've spent a couple of days of this week with my head under this bonnet. It's been a bit of a messy week, but we have made good progress, so I'll give you a show around in the back in a minute. But seeing as this took up so much of my time, I thought I'd start with this. So what I've been doing is engine preheater this has got or it came with a Webasto thermo top C and of course it didn't work you know that's just how life goes isn't it so but I do need to fix it because it's kind of an essential for having a vehicle here in the winter time minus 30 is guaranteed minus 40 even you know it's not impossible two years ago we had minus 36 in this very spot problem with that is diesel engines they don't really like to start in that temperature petrol as well but more so diesel this is the unit just here it's all nicely mounted so that's fine but it was disconnected so the guy said that it was playing up it wouldn't work it was staying on and then cutting out that's fine we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I got to get the damn thing working first trouble is he disconnected everything so this pipe here, or these two pipes, when I got the heater, these were connected to it and just cable tied down here and disconnected. So basically I was going in blind. Now I think I've got these in the right place, but this is why I wanted to drop this in. If anyone's got this same van. So I don't know how well you can see on there, but up here is where they go into the heater matrix inside and you can clearly see that line's been cut and a, a piece been put in where he's put it back together so I assume that's where this should go so I've, I've sort of plumbed it in line with that so the other line goes off down the back and that's not got any cuts in it so I assumed it was this one started the engine that one got hot first so my question is, is that the correct one to tee this into? I assume the flow is going that way. That pipe got hot first, so obviously that's coming from the engine into the heater and then back out. So I've gone in with this. So from pipe coming up, that's where this tube then went to the bottom of the unit into the pump. And then the out feed of the unit, which is the top, goes back. I just assumed that's how it went. I don't have a manual, I can't seem to find one for this particular van. So, if anyone has this van, or has experience, feel free to uh, drop it down below, that would be much appreciated. But what I've had to do with this, is rip out the entire wiring loom, because it was disgraceful. 
it had been teed into the vehicle loom so that it could control other things like the blowers and stuff but it had been done so badly words fail me how badly this had been done the copper had just been stripped back on the cables they just took a knife cut cut took that section out and just wrapped the webasto thing onto that and then left it on live main engine wires it just words failed me so i ripped the old lot out and made a new one from scratch but then the pump i realized was burnt out which is great so i had to order a new one i'm waiting for that but long story short we're nearly there when the pump comes then i can test it and if we've got any more issues go from there but without this none of this is going to be possible not in the winter anyway it's just yeah no chance so moving on on to the juicy bit i'm gonna to have to b-roll the hell out of this because it's a bit cozy in here to get a camera shot of everything but we now have an 85 percent complete i don't even know what to call this workstation let's go with that it's a bit of everything isn't it really we're nearly there we've just got the the slide out worktop to do which i'm waiting for the draw slides to turn up and then i can finish that off i appreciate it's probably not everyone's preferred color choice but i absolutely love it and that's all that matters really so we've got big sliding storage at the bottom where water containers and stuff are going to go another storage bin on the side we've got a drawer we've got a cupboard nice shelf at the top for whatever <laughs> i haven't made my mind up yet about the sink situation so I think for now I'm not going to put one in and just see how I get on with a collapsible bowl. I've decided not to put a, a tap in. I'm just going to use the water containers with the built-in tap and stick it on the side. Try and keep everything nice and simple and easy because then it's less to go wrong. It's less to freeze. All in all, it's just going to be easier to deal with in the winter. Speaking of winter, the heater is now all plumbed in and has fuel and is working. I've actually done something a bit creative with the fuel tank, so I wanted an external tank to the main van supply because I don't believe in sharing resources. That's just how I do things. So I've decided to commandeer the jerry can on the back door and turn it into the diesel heater tank. So I've now got about 15 litres of diesel heater fuel and then five litres of emergency van fuel if I ever find myself in that situation I can pop the pipe off and stick it in the van so two birds with one stone hopefully that never happens given that this van has a 90 litre fuel tank I think we're going to be okay so that's heating sorted we've got this little panel on the side here which connects into the battery monitor the shunt a little switch panel as well we've got the cameras as well on this one so just two cameras on the side just so I can see what's going on, really. And that's about it, to be honest. The job list has definitely shrank to a, a more manageable size, let's say. But it's come on leaps and bounds in the last couple of weeks. It's actually starting to look like a thing now, rather than just a van with a bed in the back. But I think this will be completely finished, even the mechanicals, by the end of September, which is what I wanted. That was the goal. I think I'm gonna do that, no problem. There's probably some bits that I've missed from the last week or so, but it's been a bit hectic. So what I will do is at the end of this little series, I'll do a, a video of just the overview of the whole van and go through everything in one video, just in case you've got a bit lost in the weeds, because I know I have. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a busy couple of months, but we are on the finishing straight now, which is good news. Don't forget Patreon is there if you're interested and you want to see these things being built you know one by one i've tried my best to film as much as i can sometimes i do have to just switch the camera off but i've done my best so that's what all of these names going down the side when you see them in the video that's everyone on there because i am very grateful for the people that sign up to that but if not as i said before i appreciate every single one of you watching and getting involved and leaving comments please feel free to Leave comments down below, suggestions or ideas. Everything is read and taken on board, as long as it's not twatish. It's happened quite a few times on this build that people have made a suggestion. It's got the old cogs turning and I've 
taking things down a different direction. So it's definitely appreciated because I'm just one guy in a field in the middle of Sweden at the end of the day. So <laughs> this is my only connection with the outside world. Bit of bonus footage for you all. The quality is going to be dreadful, but we've got a light show again. We're out with the cameras. Oh, pitch black. Sorry. <laughs> I'll try and get you a bit of footage on here. Really strong readings tonight, so it's going to be good. Typical, the moment we've come out, it's gone away. But it'll be back. Just need a bit of patience. Have a little bit of patience. <laughs> Just having a little play while we're waiting. <laughs> Oh, it's starting to come back. Hello, what are you doing? It's huh? It's gorgeous out here. Mm. There it is, look. Back. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Bit of patience. It's back. All the way over. That's just... Oh my God, those colours. <laughs> oh, his fingers out. <laughs> his fingers. It's all kicking off now. Look at this, it's just insane. I love it. Right above us. I love that I can show you like this. I don't really like doing time lapses. Although they do look, you know, amazing quality. They're just too fast. This is the reality. It's very slow and peaceful. Sometimes it does go a bit crazy, but most of the time it's like this. on surrounded by it now that's straight up this is just look at that if we point the camera this way look it's just pure black so this is all <laughs> aurora oh my god I don't even know what to photograph, there's just too much choice. I love the pink. It's going crazy right above us. I don't know, whoa. Almost. Yeah, it's just like flashes. That's so weird. <laughs> Glittery fish. <laughs> He's got Bolsky in the background. Squibbins, look up. That's proper like, whoa, what on wow. earth? So this is the rare occasion when it is fast. Oh. April, was it? Yeah, when it was like really hot day. Last year. That was. God, it's actually scary. It's not picking up on camera very well. It is quite dark, but it just keeps appearing right above us. Look, this isn't sped up. Yeah, 